Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> so I just finished painting these guys, uh, these, uh, uh, Malifo, um, Silurid guys. Um, you know, one of my, um, one of the game stores close to me, they're, like, fire sailing all of their, um, uh, uh, P3 stuff and their, um, weird miniatures stuff. So, um, yeah, I picked up these guys. So th these are actually the first Malifo guys that I picked up, um, but you'll notice there's only two of them. Uh, I, uh, I had an explosive failure on this guy. This is officially the stupidest spot that I have ever seen anybody put a joint on a, um, on a mini before, and it's just not worth my time to try and fix them. I'm not even going to use these for Malifo, I'm going to use them for D&D. Um, but, uh, anyways, yeah, <clears throat> I like the minis. They are a little bigger. These guys are like 32 millimeter, um, uh, sculpt guys. Like, that's the, I think that's the, the scale is 32 millimeter. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think that this is, this is like what I would call a, like, pro paint job. Like, not better than a tabletop standard and like base you know and stuff like that and it shows um, some like it's like different techniques and stuff um but uh yeah i thought i'm about to take a picture for my instagram um this is one of this is one of the ways i like to do it i just fold up a piece of paper and then i and then i you know like stage them somehow and then kind of get in there and take pictures like that overhead lighting um <clears throat> but yeah let's um I taped everything, including the explosive part. Um, um, let's uh, let's do a, a pro paint job. So to start with, um, I'm gonna give everything a uh, a good coat of black. Um, I did thin down the primer a lot. I think I did went like 50/50 with like black primer and then airbrush, um, you know, thinner like media. <laughs> Um, I've been having some problems with like splotchiness with uh, some, some, some with my primer, so I tried thinning it down. But you can see like it comes out kind of like super thin, like a little bit too thin. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go over everything with a, uh, a good coat of black first, just to um, get the low lights in there. And, yeah, give it a black. Good job. So um, now I'm just gonna go over my black with um, white primer, and you know, I so I thin this down too. Uh, and you you could do this stuff with white ink. Um, that's I think I might start doing that. Um, I just I, I do like Vallejo's primers a lot. I think they're really good. Like paint really wants to stick to them good. I thin this down a little bit less. And I mean, it's not quite so heavy handed either. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> good. It's, it's a good primer. It's just uh, I've, I've been experimenting with thinning it down versus not thinning it down or using inks and, uh, you know, like pure black or like a dark primer or a light primer. Um, but uh, yeah, I just have a bunch of like random stuff that I'm doing uh, some Zenithal priming on as you can see like just a bunch of stuff that I'm painting so right now I'm doing what's called a zenithal priming uh, paint job it's where you hit the, the minis from the top with uh, with a lighter color leaving the dark down in their shadows and recesses um, as if the sun was at its zenith, like the highest point in the sky, like noon sun, just coming straight down uh, <clears throat> as a light source, creating like an artificial light source for when I glaze on color later. So I'm just sort of hitting everything from the tops and then like turning the board as well, 
to, to make sure that I'm getting them all from the same uh, angles as I turn them. So that's the um, Zenithal Prime paint job. And now I'm gonna go over things with an ink wash. Um, <clears throat> the thing about doing ink washes though is that you kind of need to do it more of like a watercolor kind of step. It's like you can't go lighter. You have to start lighter and then go darker, if that makes sense. Like you're adding more color as you go so you want to start with your lightest colors and then get darker instead of doing your darkest colors first and then doing your lightest colors last like you would normally do with like an acrylic or an oil painting paint job ink wash is more like more like watercolor So after going over it with a coat of yellow, um, <clears throat> I'm going over it with a coat of the green now to darken it. And I'm pretty sure that I go over all over everything, but what I do do later is that I leave um, some of the like outer, like the, the limbs and stuff more yellow, and then I make the body more green. But right now I'm just, you know, building up the washes, like building up the color over the whole model with um, the yellow first and then the green to, to make the color darker. That's what I mean by going light to dark. If you find that you've been a little bit too heavy-handed and then you want to pick up the, uh, the ink, one way to do it is to use a paper towel. And then uh, another way is to just kind of brush the color, the ink, you know, around to where you want it to pool, to where you want things to be darker, um, and like create highlights artificially that way. So what I'm going to start doing while the inks are still drying, while the things are still wet, is I'm going to start wet blending in some some color, like doing you know wet on wet uh, painting. Um, <clears throat> so I'm using uh, P3 paints right now, and I feel like they are like the best for wet blending. Like that's kind of what they're made to do is to just be sort of watered down and then you can feather them or you can blend them together. Um, there are other paint, paints that I like better for glazing, but as far as like two brush blending and wet blending, I feel like P3, they're just like the best paints out there for wet blending. I'm also going to be using the paint straight out of the pot. Um, the, that's another thing that I like to use the P3 paints for, is just using them straight out of the pot for super opaque color.
So now I'm gonna um, use a lighter uh, green, well, a couple of lighter greens, and uh, I'm gonna um, <clears throat> uh, wet blend those two on on their backs and like faces, you know, to kind of create some more um, well highlights. But um, it's good to leave highlights like only in places where the sun, like where the sun would naturally be hitting, like highest highest points on the model, and then also like on faces because sometimes because our eyes are drawn to highlights. So if you if you see like highlights on like the tip of a person's nose, you know, it, it stands out. Another thing that you can do um, if you want to like wet blend and uh, glaze on color like this, like what I'm doing, is you can add glazing medium and uh, instead of just watering down the paint, um, and glazing medium will, it will slow down the drying time of the paint and it also makes it sort of settle into the cracks more if you're, if you're glazing on color like in thick glazes, um, but it also it seems like it makes it a little bit easier to blend two colors together. And sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just water down the paint, sometimes I glaze it. Glaze it, using glazing medium. So now that I've got my highlights and my lowlights in, um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start. I'm going to do uh, a wash, um, a, a glaze over everything, um, and I'm actually so I'm using like the Vallejo uh, wash, which is like the color is just not opaque, and then I'm adding glazing medium. And I'm also gonna add just like a couple of brushfuls of more of the P3 paints. And the P3, they're, they're, they have a lot of pigment. There's a, the pigments are really dense in their paint, so it doesn't take much you know, to change the color. But what I wanna do is I want to sort of like tie together all of my highlights and my lowlights because I don't want them to look like jagged. I want them to look like smooth and creamy. Uh, and also, I wanted the body on these guys to look a little bit more turquoise, and then I wanted the um, uh, I wanted their their extremities to be like a little more yellow, and that was just because that's how they look in the box art. Like their their and on the box art, their bodies are a little more like turquoise, and then like the the ends of their arms are more um like yellowish and uh so this was just totally based on the box art So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, glaze on some black uh, around the bases and on the rocks and stuff. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to add some glazing medium about like one to one, about half and half, just because I don't want the the bases to be 100% black, like opaque. I want some of that Senegal priming to show through. And um, also, I um, <clears throat> uh, don't want it to dry this quickly either, and I want it to kind of like sink into the cracks of the little lava rocks and stuff that I glued them to. Um, <clears throat> so you can see, yeah, it's not like totally opaque. I'm still, even though it's black, I'm still um, getting like some of that xenophobe priming to come through. 
and uh, wait for it. the um, the explosion is about to happen. Very here, here we go. Pow. Yep. Toast. And then you can see like where that joint is in that guy's leg. Like that is just so dumb. So I think yeah, I think I just kept on painting. I'm like, well, I'll keep the base, like, or I'll, I'll glue them back together and I'll keep the base, and maybe I can use the base for something else. But yeah, I did not. I ended up tossing them in the trash, because I just didn't want to fool with it. So now what I'm going to do on the bases, um, this is one of my favorite tricks for basing, um, and uh, it's, so I just use um, pigments, just dry pigments, and they look like dirt, you know, they look like stone or they look like dirt, um, they don't, you know, they're not glossy, you can dry brush on them, and um, it's like you don't have to rub any of the paint off, you don't have to do like any of the dumb stuff that you know you associate with dry brushing. You just brush on dry pigments. And like you can see like my special brush that I use just for this, just for brushing on dry pigments, and I never wash it. I just leave it, you know, in a in one of my brush jars. And I just pull it out whenever I want to use some dry pigments and then just brush them on. It's actually like a really cool trick. It's one of my favorite uh, things to use for um, like terrain and, and basing and stuff. So I'm going to use um, a uh, crapped out paintbrush. Um, this is just a paintbrush that has seen better days. And I'm going to just kind of like pull a couple of pieces out and um, snip them off and then glue those to the base. So it looks like I uh, lost the footage of where I was sticking down the little static grass tufts, but you know, you just super glue those on. Um, sometimes I do like to use tweezers to like pick them up, put them on, you know, like glue them on, and then like push them in there really good and make sure that the like the little leaves get like spread out and stuff. Um, but right now I'm so I'm gonna make sure that the the pieces of brush hair are like glued on really good and then I'm gonna go in and like I'm glued, putting more glue on but I'm gonna take um, some uh, foliage just like some clump foliage stuff so whenever I have a project where I have like some uh, like grass stuff I take like the leftovers and then I just mix them together and then you get like a nice like variation of stuff, you know, that looks like pretty natural when you put it on a base. So I just like, I just save whatever kind of clump foliage or whatever, or static grass and 
just like kind of mix it all together after I'm done, you know, and then uh, and then I glue that on. So home stretch, um, I I um, just put you know tried to just put like one little drop in of uh, of like these two colors to to mix them together to um, to make a um, to just just this is just for their stupid tongues, all right. So I ended up like mixing up a lot of paint um, just because like you know like things happened. Um, but yeah, you see, like, I, I had to mix up a lot of paint just to do, like, two little teeny tiny tons. Um, but, uh, yeah, end result, like, totally worth it. So, uh, home stretch. Um, I'm just gonna use some more paint, like straight out of the pot, so that I can um, do uh, an opaque color on the eyes. Um, and one way that I like to do this is I'll take my thumb and then I'll take my pinky and I'll kind of like rest my pinky against my thumb or do like a reach, or, like wrap around like golf grip kind of, just to steady my hands because I get shaky hands sometimes. I'm trying to do like really fine details like that. Um, but, uh, and then, um, I think I make a little boo-boo, and then, uh, what I'll do is I'll take, um, some water, like, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that there's no paint in the brush, and, like, dab away the little excess paint, and then I'll use the water to kind of, like, brush away the, um, boo-boo. So, last thing, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a, uh, a little fine line marker. This is a, a Copic marker and it has like just a really teeny tiny, you know, very very thin tip to put in the little pupils of the eyes. Um, you know, just for the last little touch. there it is that's the finished uh, paint job um, thanks for watching I hope you feel inspired